Don't be overjoyed, meaning don't go from one thrill to the next, to the next, to the next. And the, the point of that, the idea behind that was, as I mentioned to you yesterday, some people, or last week, some people, they go from one party to the next, one game to the next. Like, we do this with our kids. They're just watching one episode of something, then they want the next episode, then they want the next episode, and the next episode. And they become junkies in front of a TV station, or, or TV channel, or whatever show. Or a video game, or online gaming, or social media. It's just one high after the next, after the next. Oh, this is going to make me momentarily happy. Some people can watch useless videos of, I don't know, cats playing the piano or something for eight hours. And their day will go by. This is actually, in Allah, la يحب farihin. When people have no concerns left, they, they're wealthy, or their needs are met. They don't have to go out and earn a living. They don't have to take care of responsibilities. They get a lot of free time. And when they get a lot of free time, they start getting spoiled and start wasting their time. So what do young people do sometimes? When their parents are providing the, the income and they're taking care of the household and they're, do, they're doing all the responsibilities, well then they got a lot of free time. So they're just moving from one, you know, entertaining experience to the next, to the next, to the next. You have kids, and, and this calling out the youth is important just as it is calling out the elders. Whoever does wrong should be called out, myself included. So you have, you know, parents paying their children's college tuition. And your parents are paying your tuition, you're taking three or four or five classes in college, and you're not really putting any effort into it. You haven't even decided what major to do yet. You're in between classes, you're hanging out, skipping homework assignments and all of it. That's an amana. Your parents paid for this. This is on you. You have to take care of it. But you feel like you can just, you know, don't toss it away because you don't feel any sense of responsibility. All of your needs are taken care of. You know, a young man who you give them a car, you just hand them a new car because they graduated. The way they're going to treat that car is garbage. As opposed to that same young man, if you worked hard and saved a little bit of money and bought an old, busted old car that you wouldn't even look at twice, he's going to treat it like a queen. Why? Because it, it came with a sense of responsibility. Sometimes Allah gives wealth and luxury and that instead of becoming a blessing, it becomes a poison. And so the advice that people are giving Qarun is he's got a lot of money, but now it seems he's just going from one joyous thing to the other and he's happy about what he's got. There's no real gratitude left. And that's a real fear we have to have for our children and ourselves also. Are we becoming those kinds of people? And it's not just about you know movies and video games and parties and all of those things. Sometimes people think that they're doing something religious and it's shallow also. They go from one, you know, halaqa setting to another halaqa setting to another, and in the name of Islam, but it's not really Islam, it's just sitting there backbiting, and say they're judging what kind of food people cook, it's just a social event and nothing more, but it feels Islamic, <laughs> you know. Allah knows the difference between what's genuinely building somebody's akhirah, and what we're doing that's actually got poison mixed in with it. So let's not delude ourselves. You know, sometimes people assume that they are righteous, and Allah says, لا تزكوا أنفسكم don't declare yourselves righteous. Don't think that yourselves are pure. Huwa a'lamu biman ittaqa. He knows better who has taqwa or not. So this first advice as a quick review and then the logical progression of this advice is pretty powerful. There are five items here and I hope to cover all five today in quick succession. He says, or they say to him, وَابْتَغِي فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ Simple. Whatever Allah has given you, put it to use and pursue the next life with it. What in the world does that mean? That means everything you and I do in our waking moments, we have an opportunity to get something for this life and the next life at the same time. If you're going to go get halal work, not only are you making money for paying the bills, but you're also doing an act of worship. So you're actually building your next life while you're building this life. So any free time you and I have, if we can start investing that time in a way to think to ourselves, what can I do that benefits me here? but also benefits me in the next life. وَابْتَغِي فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهَ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ Many scholars looked at this ayah and said this also means from whatever Allah has given you, think about what more and more and more you can give to Allah for your akhirah account. Some of you may have heard me talk about this before. Everybody here knows the concept of a bank account. When you put things in a bank account and sometimes you have different kinds of accounts like a retirement account. When you put money in a retirement account, you can't just take it out. You gotta wait 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years, whatever long it is. So that money is, it's yours, but you can't touch it. It's yours, but you can't touch it. Spending for your next life is exactly like that. When you, when you give something in charity, when you help somebody with a loan, 
When you help somebody who's, you know, a widow or an orphan, or when you take care of a family, anonymous, when you do these kinds of things, when you help build a masjid or you help support some, you know, some good cause, when you do these kinds of things, you're actually not giving to anybody else. You just transfer funds. You know how you do transfer between accounts? It's all it is. You transfer from your dunya account into your akhirah account. That's all that is. Still your account. It's nobody else's account. You didn't lose any money. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to say, مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صدقة. Money doesn't go down because of charity. First of all, Allah will give you more in this life. But on top of that, what you give has actually not been lost at all. That was your own deposit for yourself. That was for your retirement account in the Akhirah. And every, everything you spend gets multiplied at least 700 times. At least. The Qur'an's guarantee. You know? فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ so the advice being given to him is Allah has given you a lot, but this a lot that Allah has given us in this world is basically going to be worthless in a few years. Think about that for a moment. Whatever Allah has given, if Allah has given you a beautiful house, if you have amazing clothes, if you have great savings, if you have a great education, great job, great social status, if you have the best of the best of this life, how long do you have it? How long before it's gone? And if it's not gone, you're gone. The house will still be there, you'll be in the, in the backyard buried. The house is still there, the bedroom's still really nice. The living room's re- still really beautiful. The car is still there, we're not there anymore. So Allah wants us to build something truly for the future. Truly, truly for the future. So He says, yes, have good things in this life, but make sure that it's a double investment. It benefits you here, and it benefits you in the next life. And if you and I start asking ourselves that question, what I'm doing right now, is it something that's giving me some kind of happiness here, but it's maybe hurting my next life? Or is it something that's good here and good there at the same time? Ah, uh, that changes our course of behavior quite a bit. It changes our actions quite a bit. You, the choices you make start changing. That's the second advice he's being given. But how is it connected to the first advice? The first advice was don't just be overjoyed looking for one thrill to the next to the next. Because when people just want to entertain themselves, they don't think about the long term. They're only thinking about having fun right now. They just want to feel happy. Farah. In Allah la yuhibbul farihin. Someone who just wants to be happy doesn't want to think about tomorrow or next week or next year or 10 years from now. They don't want to think about that. They're thinking about right now. Man, I just want to have a good weekend. It's Friday night. What do you want me to do? That's all they're thinking about. And so Allah gives us through this advice the ability to think ahead. When you think ahead and you make good choices, then you get better here, get better things here and in the next life. This is actually the dua all of you know really well. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Give us the best in this life and the next life. That doesn't mean give me Jannah here and Jannah there. It means give me the ability of doing good things here, the good things that will build my next life there. 